Hey everyone, it is Doug from Zany Bricks, and I'm here with Patrick from Building with Data and Riley. And hello, everybody. We are going to drink some stuff and other things and talk about random stuff that has nothing to do with anything in particular. So I brought Patrick on here because Ozzy flaked and Patrick came to the rescue. <laughs> I am. Um, I wanted to get him on here and really ask him about how he he has a weird background with Lego. I hear that you've been in Lego the whole time, but then you're out of Lego or you didn't have a dark age, but you did. So if you no, could, I how did that I go? definitely had a dark age. There was definitely a time in there. I think it was around it was closer when I was getting to like 17, 18 when I was really becoming an adult. And one day it was just like, I'm going to pack it up. I don't want to get rid of it, but I'm, you know, I'm not into this anymore, kind of. And it was more of worried about, you know, people saying, you know, well, you're playing with toys or whatever, that kind of notation. So I just voluntarily packed it up and I put it away. But I had such a passion for it. Like, I can never throw it away, no matter. I didn't, I moved several times and I didn't always take it with me, but I always knew it knew where it was. It was always either safe at my parents' house or in storage or something like that. So um, I kept it, and uh, it, was, it wasn't until uh, Riley was born, which is my daughter. She was born, and I started going back down the toy aisle uh, just because you're at the, the Toys R Us with the Babies R Us inside, and you're looking at the baby bottles and all that stuff you're going to need. Well, the you know, the toy aisle is not so far away, and it was just amazing to see how much Lego changed in the stuff that I used to build or what I could build now with all these new pieces and um, new tile, decorated tile pieces uh, with different, you know, uh, you know me and tiles. I love them. They can really change a scene of Lego, you know, with a donut scene or donut tile or, you know, a warning zombie tile. You can really spice up your leg bricks with uh you know those deck tiles and there's been more of those the minifigures have changed when i was in it when originally in it they just had the original smiley face you know now they have um the you know feminine side and i was also the minifigure i really liked the um the, the series of collectible minifigures but um but being back in with Riley and everything, I started buying her Lego friend sets because I know how Lego works. That not every, um, not every set is going to be around forever. So I started buying her certain small uh, Lego friend sets, and then when she was two and a half, she saw them, like immediately pointed at them, wanted me to start building. We did, and we slowly got into it. It was like basically like a, a out of control snow out of control snowball because you know it started with these few small sets and then we got one bigger one and then another bigger one and then uh, one day we broke out all of my sets that I had in storage and we had a city in the middle of the uh, living room floor <laughs> so that really then we were really back into it we were watching people on YouTube um, watching other people wanting to join into the whole YouTube community um, and have uh, put out a successful channel. And uh, we built a few good builds and we're able to be pretty successful. Um, we're at uh, like 2,400 subscribers. So, but that's, that's where we're at today. And now we're, you know, I was just talking with you about going to Philly breakfast. That's the, the next step is going out in public and sharing our Lego collection. Very cool. Now, are you working on the collaborative mock? You are, obviously, but um, what individual parts are you working on for that collaborative mark, mock, if you want to give sort of an overview? Sure. I'm just doing some, um, it's a haunted fairground carnival, um, which is the, the theme for our mock. And my specific part that I'm doing is the uh, game booth. Um, I'm doing... Um, and one is like a, just a basic balloon pop game, um, but I'm going to do like knock down the zombie head 
Um, like where there's milk bottles, there's usually like three milk bottles. I'm going to have three zombie heads for people to throw balls at and knock down the zombie heads. Um, there's also been a talk about, you know, those uh, squirt gun games where you shoot the into the they shoot the water into the, like the clown's head or whatever. Yeah. We were yeah. talking about uh, and Harold at Norbricks was talking about, he suggested doing maybe like um, a bat head or vampire head shooting blood into well, a uh, uh, vampire head shooting blood into a bat or vice versa. <laughs> that is a good, um, that's an excellent idea. I can think of some technical. Yes, that, that you could do that with very, really easily. Okay. Okay. Well, I was thinking just the uh, lightsaber rod. Oh, you could do it that way too. The red yeah. lightsaber rod. I was thinking ones that actually well, you... screw shafts, basically, so that it will lift and okay. it will raise and lower, and you can make it whatever. I was overcomplicating it. That's what I do. That's <laughs> well. That's I got to get into more technic, and after Philly, that's going to be my first purchase is the uh, the first motor set or whatever, so I can cool. start playing with the elevators for the. Because that's still going to happen. The office mock, it, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's addictive. Yes. It does it get does. addictive it when does. you start getting into the motor stuff. You start wanting to do, you start realizing that you can do extremely complex things, but the cost just gets exponentially more when you talk about some of the gears and some of the mechanisms that you um, you need to do some things or at least you want to in a small amount of space. So a lot of your mocks, even though you don't do Technic, you put a lot of mechanical detail into your mocks. It may be just the representation of that detail, like with the Jam Factory, with your, um, with your grain silo. I know your grain silo was, you did an insane amount of research and just you learned all about it during the process. So I'm assuming, and I always did assume, but maybe you'll, tell us a little bit more about it. I'm assuming you use these and you build with Riley as part of these and you use all that research as, as a tool of teaching her. But um, how do you do that? I mean, what's what's the way that you engage that process? Well, we were, we were just talking about um, off air what a different world we live in um, with just cell phones at our, you know, the, the internet at our fingertips and being able to um, look things up immediately. So you can be in the Lego room uh, thinking about how the silo works or something about it and not be able to come up with the answer, but then go watch a YouTube video. You just, and you don't even have to type. You can, they have the microphones now. You just type in the, you know, punch the little microphone. How do you do this or, <laughs> or whatever? And uh, we do a lot of that. We, I use a lot, my phone now, um, a lot in the Lego room. If it wasn't the phone, it was the computer watching YouTube videos. There was sometimes Riley doesn't sit down and watch a lot of the research um, videos because sometimes I have to go through uh, tons of videos to know exactly what I'm talking about and find exactly what I'm looking for. Um, but basically, then I, I always um, explain that to her and how it works. Uh, you know, she sits in on the filming of the videos. Uh, as well. But then also in general playing, um, I think that's how we, I teach her a lot with Lego is also the fact that they can be used as little, you know, mini dolls and, you know, we get into it and we start pretending and we have the farmer and what he's doing and this and that. Um, and a lot with Riley, it leads to, you know, someone getting kidnapped and, you know, stealing some gems or <laughs> something like that but he, you know we, we there is a lot of that and that's how the jam factory was born too as I, I was i was telling you as i was messing around with riley and just you know i ordered ten thousand pieces of jam and asked her how she would make that and she didn't know how and at first it started with just a conveyor belt and i'm like oh this is a conveyor belt and this is how it would work and i'm like now she's needs a sales team i just was mostly joking around but as I was saying it, I was like, huh, I wonder what a sales office in Lego would look like, you know, and what would the, you know, process be to get the jam here? And how would I, and I, that's how, you know, I, I kept going with it. And then it became just, it was a long project, but you, you're able to go back and 
and put a lot of detail once you look at something for a long time. I like kind of taking my time with uh, a mox, but uh, but it also gives a lot of time of, of explanation and what I'm trying to uh, uh, teach Riley with. But yeah, she didn't learn any um, bad habits as well um, when I made the joyful mug. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. You made the whole um, you made a bar with her. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it had a brew uh, system in it. It had a brewery, right? It, it, that, well, no, that was the, the kegs, the storage of the oh, kegs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it had a she hydraulic thinks, system. She's still, wait, where's my camera? If I can get this. Oh, the Brick Daniels. She still thinks that's a uh, pop. <laughs> nice. or, 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 or soda, depending on uh, where you're from. There but, are uh, some root beer bottles that are actually that same it's the dark brown bottles trans dark okay. brown it, that are root beer bottles that go alongside that very well that aren't alcoholic obviously but i just right. Right. Uh, picked up some but no we put the whole um the music theme in there too so more about there's also a concert going on in this bar um but yeah unfortunately bartending is something i've done so it was very much a part of my life. So it felt like uh, the ma came naturally to me. So that one, not so much for educational purpose, but something that I wanted to work on just personally. Nice. So back to, I guess, or to start the real topic of tonight, now that we've learned a little bit about you and your background. Sure. Our discussion is um, who would win in a fight? And I have a list of approximately 400 people here that we're going to go through <laughs> and determine who would win in a fight. Okay. And this may sound unorthodox because it is. So um, let's just go with it. I love it. So who would win in a fight? The Incredible Hulk or Thor, but Asgard was destroyed. I'm going to say the Incredible Hulk. Why? The words of God. But it's the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> but the words of God. Yeah, because I like the Incredible Hulk more. <laughs> okay, Superman and Batman. <laughs> Oh, they made a. Have they made that movie yet? I think they made the movie, there, but we don't know who won in the movie. We, okay. Um, Superman. Superman, why? He's um, an alien. <laughs> Batman's just a man. Batman's just a man with fancy gadget. A rich guy, right? Right, right. Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne, something like that. <laughs> Mm -mm. Okay, so that is a completely not valid without... So this was a game that I decided to do with Ozzy, and Ozzy is into ranting and picking up on something like that, and he has strong opinions. <laughs> Very strong opinions. Strong they mean that so much. I can't carry that. That's relying on that. <laughs> Ozzy, where are you at? <laughs> so, anyways, back to um, back to what we were rambling about before, with um, the mocks and everything. So, you have the harvester, and you have a house mock that you're working on. I don't want to ruin it, but you can tell as much as you want about it. But you have your your sure. next mock. What are you doing with that? That's different. What have you learned from all of your from your sort of detail level that you put into your mocks with research? What what techniques have you learned over time that sort of are common sense now that you wish that you had known at the beginning? Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I don't know. Well, I guess, I guess the one thing that is that you have to do the research. Like it, the one thing that's helped me the most is the fact that I kept, I kept going back to the internet 
and looking at pictures of this house, because I'm, I'm building a modern house um, from Tempe, Arizona. It's a real house. And I was looking through pictures. I, thought, I fell in love with it. I, you know, I said, that's an awesome looking house. I want to build that in Lego. Um, so I got it together. And I, once again, I was having problems you know, how, how is this back of the house look? What is in the back of the house? What compartment here? And I was just basically kept going back to the um, internet. And I finally found the schematics of the house, the actual blueprints. So it's, it, it's really easy for me to build this house now because I know what every room is, what every piece of furniture goes, um, you know, there, I found where the garage is, where I didn't know what that, the whole side of the house was, and it's just the garage. <laughs> and it's and, and something you don't want to fill in yourself. Uh, but as far as, like, building techniques, I haven't gotten that far, other than I, it, when you need the room, you just expand the mock, build things bigger. Like, if you want details in there, if you want it to look realistic, that's always my key. No matter how small I want to make something, I always end up making it. Um, I always start like a, a, on a smaller base plate, a 36 by 36, and I end up always going to the 48 by 48. <laughs> right. So basically your advice would be to start bigger than you expect and maybe trim down size if you want yeah, to. Yeah, um, or, um, or more of, uh, basically don't be afraid to go bigger you know if like on this one actually i am on a 48 by 48 base plate and i had to add a 16 um by whatever i'm gonna have to add i think it's three 16 by 32s i'm gonna have to add on the sides um so my yeah i guess my advice is don't be afraid to spend uh money on extra brick to make things a little bit bigger so you can fit the inner details um, as, as silly as a bathroom, um, I'm going to cram a bathroom in, but it's part of the house. And that's how you flow, you know, from a hallway into the pool is through a bathroom. You know, there's no way other way to go in there. I, I guess I could make it a hallway, but. Are you going to put anything in the, the toilet? Have you gone to that detail level where you've actually considered what's in the toilet bowls in your Lego mocks? Like if it's water or if it's something, or is it just a, a hollow inverted dome? No, we put, we purposely put pieces in there. Um, <laughs> I think on our, orig our original blog that me and Riley did, we actually took pictures of it and put it okay. on. It was from the subway and we put one, we put the water stud in there um, to be represent a clean bowl, and then we also did one the uh, the not the stud the the it's a round plate. I always call them stud, but it's a round plate. Uh, we used a, a clear blue one, and then we also used a brown one to represent. <laughs> nice. And then I and then I used it for the uh, the joy or the empty mug the bar the bar that I made as I used little tiny um, yellow flat tiles for pee on the floor so <laughs> so do you ever go to, a, go, ahead, you ever go to a level of detail with that sort of stuff where you go down a path that you realize that you put in too much detail in one section you just cannot possibly do it in the rest so you have to pull back and sort of i i feel the biggest struggle with doing interior detail and really making it legoized and I really have to adopt that concept that it's not like real life, a meth lab in Lego. It won't look like a meth lab in real life. It will look like a cartoonish version of a meth lab in a condensed space. That's sort of in my mind, that's what it looks like. And right. that's what I do, you know, big tanks that are explosive and blah, 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 that sort of thing. What you'd expect. You want to right, play right. stereotypes. So when you go to that level of detail, though, where do you call it quits? Do you have this finite line that if you go, if you make it this detailed here, you can't make it anymore, or you have to make it that detailed elsewhere, or vice versa? I think you always you always tear on that. I, I think, um, and that's why my mocks end up being so big, because it's like. 
well, if I put in, you know, this front desk, I have to put in, you know, bathrooms. Or if I put in bathrooms, I have to put in this. Or um, like the employee lounge of the Jam Factory was born, not because I'm like, you know what I want to see in Lego is a is an employee lounge. <laughs> it was because I had an empty room and I didn't know what to do with it because I put in the, the bathrooms and um, I don't think the front desk had anything to put it back. I expanded out to put the bathrooms in because I saw Lego bathrooms and they look cool on, you know, some website somewhere. <laughs> I said, oh, I want to do that. You know, I want to put in a little urinal and uh, all that kind of stuff. But um yeah, so I think you teeter on that all the time. Uh, you're constantly, I don't, I try not to pull back anything, but sometimes you do have to cut something and say, you know what, I have to just do without this whole section because you're right. It's just, you just keep going and going. Right. Once again, so, to the snowball. Do you ever find yourself actually pulling back on something you put in and, and reducing detail in a, in some place just to match the rest like you don't want to go into as much detail in one area so you have to actually pull back and um or you don't want to go into as much detail across the entire mock so you've already detailed one area and you detailed it too much i don't think i've ever pulled back i would i more i would more push forward and expand yeah. on the mock then <laughs> if i yeah. ever get to that point because <clears throat> to me it's all about the details i'm trying to find that careful point you know yeah. that tipping point the fulcrum right i just still no, that's why there's this the secret there the secret poker room was built um but there there's there's stuff i cut off my mocks um there was supposed to be a back smoking patio on the empty mug. Um, I just didn't have room for it. I would have to put another base plate out there. Um, and that's something I can also go back to and expand on in the future once I place it in a city. Right. Well, cool. So you talk about your background as a bartender. Do you, Lego being mainly focused in licenses and geeky stuff these days, pop culture what is your pop culture background i mean where do you where's your musical roots and your um your comic book geekery that sort of thing fair enough. i'm i'm i would say the most the the as far as pop culture the the thing we're into the most um is star wars um i'm not a huge I would say I'm not at all. I don't. I'm not a comic book kind of guy. Never really got into to that um, sort of geekery. I mean, I'm a big geek, but not necessarily. I'm more of sit back and watch four different versions of um, you know who is uh, Ray's father in Star Wars. You know, is it is it Luke Skywalker? Is it Anakin Skywalker? You know what I mean? Like I can't get enough of the expanded universe. Um, probably the most interesting one I heard recently was, did you hear that Anakin Skywalker was created by Snoke, who is uh, Darth, Darth Plagueis? Yeah, the whole Anakin. transfer of bodies. And then there's the Snoke is a celestial being one. Yeah, the I haven't whole... heard that one yet. Yeah, there's I I have heard those and I I watch those when I'm in the background. They stream one after another on their own. Yeah, yeah. And I'm doing something. So that's that's our biggest. My music. I mean, I listen to everything almost as far as music goes. Um, right, oh, man. My background. I couldn't even. Like it's heavy into rap and rock, you know. Rap, like, like what sort of rap there? Like uh, right now, I'm listening to Chance the Rapper and Childish Gambino, um, who are very, very talented um, rappers, if you will. Uh, very skilled, um, not only in beats but in in their flow. But um, no, I mean I've. I, you know, my background is 
Tupac. That's how old I am. <laughs> so do you do you believe that Tupac is dead? Yes. Okay. I, at one point, I thought there was a good chance he was alive. <laughs> but if he would have came back, he would have came back already. No, there's, there's the, the, the song theory, is, it, you know, it's very um, weird. It's very coincidental that you're coincidental that he would talk about you know machiavelli and you know seven years and all that stuff so yeah a lot of the but i did see a, a crazy uh conspiracy that he was killed by the fbi that tupac yeah. was killed by yeah. the why did why would the fbi want to kill tupac is it because fuck the police type thing or yeah, he's a very strong leader that they couldn't control. Um, I think as he would have got older, he would have probably had more influence. I don't know if that's the reasoning, um, but it is weird that like Death Row Records had so many FBI agents employed, um, and I guess that's public record or whatever. So, <laughs> but it's all it's all conspiracy. But it was it was very interesting. It was they, they, the guy brought up a lot of weird points. But um, no, I'm as far as rock music goes, like I love my favorite guitarist is Jimi Hendrix. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. No, He's never. Kind of I've never heard of Jimi Hendrix at all, <laughs> ever before in my life. I don't know anything about him. I think he was the guy who couldn't play the guitar, so he just tried to play himself without learning or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. So He's like, a, he, that's that's like when Riley was um, younger. I used to when tr trying to put her to sleep. I used to put on like a Jimi Hendrix documentary or the like rockumentaries where there's actually a lot of music in it. Yeah. <laughs> so she knows her fall asleep. She's inspired to pick up a guitar and just teach herself one day. I have one. I have one in 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 always always. She she actually does. Try to play. <laughs> she get her little but, ukulele. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about one of those little kids' guitars. They have pretty high quality ones nowadays. Yeah, the oh, ukuleles are. Um, I mean, they're not kids' guitars, but a ukulele, you can, right. a good quality one that's perfect size for a small child to actually play nicely. Right. I have to uh, look into that. But yeah, that we want to get we want to get her in piano lessons. That's something that has to happen um, sooner than later. So that being said, I mean, I have a new baby coming, a um, a boy that's expected in July. So I'm sort of trying to figure out when the best time is to plan for um, introducing Lego, learning toys, different things into his. I guess his life and his workflow or his um, learning workflow. So when did you do that with Riley? It was really early, way before the suggested um, playing ages that they give on the box. She was two and a half, um, but she had just saw the boxes and she knew there was toys inside and she wanted to see them. And she was smart enough to ask for them. So I said, sure, you know, let's give it a try. Um, I, I made a joke the other day that she actually puts Lego in her mouth more now than she when she was young. That was one of the rules. If you want to bring out the Lego, you're not allowed to put it in your mouth because the choking hazard is what you worry about. But she she understood that and she she played by the rules really, really well. And we also um, start off with small sets, the small friend sets where it's like uh, – just like a little car um, and a mini doll. And then, you know, we'd add another car and a mini doll. Then it was the tree house. And this went on over a few months. So before we were really into Legos, you know, and playing it a lot, she was closer to three years old. But it just depends on, you know. All right, my question for you is if, you know, if your young child is in your city and, you know, starts ripping stuff apart, you know, how are you going to feel about that? Oh, me? I've, I have yeah. been, so I was in a situation where um, Becky and I were taking a break and I um, 
I was dating someone who had kids and they came over and they, they, they messed it up Yeah. at times. And I didn't care. I mean, what's the point of having it there? Unless if you're actually, they didn't mess it up to be malicious. If they were messing it up to be malicious, I would, you know, be one thing. if the kid was messing it up because he was being destructive, then I would probably slap his hand type thing. I would teach him that it was not a good thing to do because you don't want to destroy stuff just to destroy it. If he was just right. if he was being destructive in a creative way, sure, I'm all for it. As long as they're yeah, actually I need, doing I need that piece. Yeah, I think I think you have the right attitude, and that's pretty much it. Because you're not a, a, that's you can let him down there as a, at a younger age, because and he's just gonna you know peel stuff off, and sometimes he might not know what he's doing, you know, but he's not being he might not be being malicious, but just curious of, of the parts and how, how they work and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, what my thoughts are, if I can't figure out how to put it back together easily, then it probably wasn't built correctly. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, I mean, you can – it's pretty much – it's it's always – it's every parent's decision, and you have to play it by ear. Um, and it's just basically when he's ready, he's going to be following you around and wanting to know what you're doing naturally. So right. if you're off in the Lego room when he's a baby, it's, and that's the funny thing is Georgie, uh, our, our baby who is only, um, nine months old, she can, um, take a minifigure and go like this, like she's playing, like she sees Riley play enough because we have. If we're not playing down in the Lego room, we have a few minifigures and a set upstairs on the kitchen table and then one in her room. So we're always like, she's always trying to get me to, to do a little um, playing and everything. So I have the baby too, and the baby will grab a minifigure and I'm obviously there to make sure she doesn't, cause she does try to put it in her mouth and I'll just block her hand, but then she'll take it and she'll go. And it's just like, she's learning how to play. And that's what, that's what she's translating into playing is that you take this little guy and you move him around. <laughs> and that's cool. You actually see that directly in your um so she's already playing with system then. You're just skipping duplo. Yeah. <laughs> right. We just we go she does have a duplo set uh, or a box of duplo upstairs that you know when I need to go do something with Riley or something, I will dump out her her duplo box. And I know that I don't have to worry about her choking on anything. So I can walk away for a minute if she, you know, she has those bigger, bigger blocks. But yeah, no, she, we, she's, de she definitely skipped into a uh, system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, I've already been buying the Duplo to an nice. extent. Nice. Some of the sets that were really cool sets, at least I've been picking them up. I don't know. And that's, that's, that's the other good learning opportunity for, for um, well, the, for you, uh, for us, and for our children is the um, YouTube aspect. Watching you edit videos, watching you um, shoot videos, um, just the whole structure of YouTube. It's crazy how familiar it Riley is with YouTube um, and that kind of and how stuff works and and all that good stuff. Um, and then plus moving on into like you say, you use a lot of Technic, a lot of motorized stuff that's something that you know in the future is going to be very useful um a learning tool for them to play around with and Absolutely. create their own it's extremely useful for i mean i could build a little demonstration of how a motor works or how an engine works or how a type of mechanism works that they could actually play with and they can see and feel and understand a lot better than than you could just by showing them a picture or even a video of how it works. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. So there's, there's definitely plenty of opportunity to uh, learn with Lego. I'm still, I learned stuff. Like I said, the research I did on the Harper store is because I wanted to make one, but I didn't know enough about, and I'm detail oriented on my box. I didn't know enough to make details, to put details in there. Um, so I literally would go watch farm guys go work on their harvest stores. <laughs> so I was there and around it, like, oh, look, look, there's a mechanical box there. That's something I can add on. 
or, or look at this, you know what I mean? Just certain um, aspects of uh, farming that I learned about when I was doing those kind of mocks. Um, as, as, as well as, you know, looking at the, the blueprints, you know, a house, you don't learn too much from a house, except the way this one was constructed, it, it was using these big steel beams that set on top of smaller structures to make the top floor. Um, so that's pretty interesting. That's something I, I want to say learned, but observed. Yeah. It, it's cool to see how they actually when you start to look at that architecturally, how buildings are built, you see, you start to notice, you know, what are load bearing columns. And then you start, even if you're not a civil engineer, you start to realize and start to actively think about when you see a building, the load bearing columns, where they are. And then you can directly translate that to Lego stuff. I mean, Lego is exactly the same as building trusses in Lego is the exact same as building trusses out of wood. If you can, at yep. least the structure that they've been using for thousands of years is still going to be the most effective structure to support that amount of weight in Lego as well. So um, it's really cool when you start to really pay attention to analyze, to be able to build these mocks, you start to also learn a lot more in general. If you hadn't paid attention before, you start to learn about civil engineering just as a byproduct. So I think it's yep. neat. I, I talk with a lot of people that when, as they get into it, they start to refer to things and, you know, trussing. They, where they had never heard about trussing before, they aren't carpenters, they don't understand anything about it, but they understand what trussing is. They understand what a structural support matrix is. It's right. stuff like that, that you're layman, but because your hobby happens to be playing with Lego, you understand that sort of thing. It's cool. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's definitely. I, I find myself watching like the uh, the TED talks on you know modern architecture, um, watching you know the home the most amazing home shows and stuff like that. Just seeing, just you know, and also just searching modern architecture. Some of the best uh, architecture is in um, Dubai. Um, I in in my opinion, some of the most modern architecture. If you're into modern, yeah, it definitely yeah. Dubai has the modern twist on it the, the craziest one that they're, they're trying to build is uh there is a house like an apartment that's half underwater so like you have one layer that's it, it it's like a self-divided like it's it's not even it's in the middle of the ocean so basically it's a hundred percent view of their they have some kind of refuge animal life you know with sea turtles and stuff sure um, yeah. So basically, your basement floor is a 360-degree view of the ocean floor. <laughs> nice. And that is accompanied, accompanied by the top floor, which is your – it's basically like you're on a boat. You know, you're in the middle of the ocean. And um, and then the top floor has like a jacuzzi and everything. But it's big enough to have the bedrooms downstairs, the bathroom downstairs. It's the most uh, interesting-looking house I, I've seen recently. It's very small, but still, you know – your walls of your basement are the ocean. That's <laughs> how cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I almost went to Bora Bora one time and stayed in that whole thing where you, you stay in the bungalows on top of the ocean. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Like the stilt houses. Yeah. I ended up canceling out last minute, but there's those down in Bora Bora that are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But it gives you just quite a different attention. Thing. Paying attention to the architecture around you. And a lot of people ask for advice about how to become a better Lego builder. And it's not about being a better Lego builder. It's not hard to put a bunch of bricks together. Or it, you learn these techniques, and these techniques are awesome, but they're little techniques that you learn once and you can apply to everything. They're not, they don't right. take a lot of time. The hard part about being a Lego builder, if you don't already have it, is to study architecture, to study your actual subject matter. It's just like being any sort of artist. You have to study your subject matter or else you won't be able to recreate it. So you can do random, you know, abstract things all day long. But if you want to be a better Lego builder for anything, you need to understand what you're building. And that's really the path forward, not just the technique. The technique's good. But when you know what you want to build and you have something in mind, 
you'll find the techniques to actually make them happen. Yeah. And that's, a, that's another, um, speaking of studying the, you know, the form, the, the art, like another thing I do, and it really helps me out is I study people's builds. Like I'll be on different websites, mock pages, anything that has pictures of people's builds. And I just love one. I love to look at them. It's, it's, it's enjoyable for me to look at, um, how people build their mocks and, and what inspired them or, or things of that sort. But, um, but since I know that it's like, you know, I've seen so many different bathrooms. I've seen so many different kitchens. There's so many different, you know, different scenes that when I come to a part of a mock that is, uh, you know, a kitchen or a bathroom, I'm like, well, I can use this or I can use this. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll actually keep the, the pictures of people's builds. And so I can refer back to them if I'm ever building something and I, I want to use a technique that they used, whether it be with a chair or like uh, another house. Something I'm studying right now is um, old furniture made out that looks, that's minifigure scale that's made out of Lego. It's just really old antique furniture. It's hard to do that. It's 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 about using the deviations in the tile and making them or being able to slightly offset them yep. everything to get that look for that old furniture. And um, it's hard to really sit there and find that right combination. Yeah, and there's and there's some and the, the, the funny the fun part is trying to figure out if you like someone build um, is try to emulate that. And you'll try to be like, well, what part is they used here? I, I, I need to turn it over. <laughs> I don't I don't really do that a lot. I, I don't think I look at a lot of Lego stuff as at least as an example to, for what to build ever. At least yeah. I don't think I have. I always, whenever I think of something to build, it's usually off of some just abstract painting or like Escher, I love to a lot of my ideas and it has nothing to do with Escher at all because it's not like they're geometrical shapes or anything, but a lot of my best ideas, that I, at least what I feel are my best ideas, have come up when I'm just actually looking through Escher prints. I like to do that. I love Escher. Okay. did some amazing, just all his different styles that he did. And um, it really especially with his patterns, it sort of teaches you to look at things a little bit differently. At least I feel it puts my brain into that mode to be able to create. Okay. And yeah, I don't, and I, and I don't do it a lot. Like I said, it's mostly on smaller details because sometimes it depends on what you're building too. Like um, the office mock that I, that I talked about, that I'm going to use, there's going to be a lot of different offices in there. So I'm going to pull from different builds. But like, you know, the, the farm um, and the, the barn and everything, I want to do something different um, to look different than everything I've seen out there. And I still actually did study it, um, but I determined that I wanted to do something, you know, I didn't want to emulate. I kind of wanted to take it in a different direction. So it depends, you know, you sometimes you want to be really creative and sometimes you'll copy somebody. And I'll, of course, always give them, if I do an exact copy, I did that for the, the fax machine inside the jam factory. It was one of those, you know, I saw that fax or the copy machine and it just reminded me of an office. And I was like, I got to put that up there. But I made sure in the video that I gave the person credit of where um, at least I thought that the original build had come from. Right. Yeah, I have a, um, it's always a running joke about the whole credit thing. I... A lot of people, and I'm sure you get it too, you probably less because you don't have a city. And I think it's something that comes when you have a Lego city, people start wanting to give you ideas for your Lego city. Okay. And the complete common sense ideas that come up like, hey, you should put stoplights in your city. And then when they see you put stoplights in your city months later or something, they think that they gave you that idea. Or that is <laughs> the idea that, that they came up with and that you should give them credit for or something. And, not that it's a complete common sense direction for the city. Like there's alleys behind the buildings. There's roads in front of them. There's stoplights on the right. roads. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's also, hey, you should put sidewalks in your city. <laughs> I have sidewalks. They're just not the kind of sidewalks you have. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I, I get a lot of suggestions. I get a lot of, you should build this, you should build that. Um, 
I actually want to write them all. If I wish I started writing them down every time I got them, so I didn't have to go back and look. But I, I would love to go back and write down every suggestion and do like a poll of what you want me to build next. <laughs> I did that. I did that like six months ago, and I built something. I forget what it was, but I did that. Oh, again. well, well yours the, well, there was the one that you had me build, or you had me decide to build. Oh, um, what was that? The um, sweatshop. Oh, the sweatshop thing for the that I put the Guardians of the Galaxy running the sweatshop. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Italian restaurant slash sweatshop. Yep. Mob mob front mob Italian front. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I never finished the interior on, but I like the okay. exterior and it fits in nicely. Perfect. <laughs> do you now do you do an interior for every building in your city? So I plan random. I build for and I plan an interior for every building, including the big like skyscraper. I I okay. make it into modular chunks so I can do a full on interior, mini fig scale interior for every single building I do. And it's something about it's because it's how I sort of gauge scale. If I didn't plan for that and design around that, I wouldn't scale things correctly across different sizes of builds. So um I plan on doing an interior, to be honest. I've gotten lazy. I have gone back. I've forced myself to go back. Every couple months, I'll go back and I'll do a full interior on one of the bigger buildings. Like, I just went back okay. and I a full interior on my robot police station. That's but I never did a video or anything on it. And the thing with interiors, I do them more for, I don't know, if I ever do some in-depth detailed city tour where I actually take the buildings apart. They may see the light of day, yeah. but we're, I may take a floor off and stage a little scene and post an Instagram photo, but that's all they're used for. Right. Right. I like doing them though. Yeah, you might find, you might find that problem having to stop uh, as far as detail goes though, because your buildings have been set. You know what I mean? You can't go any bigger. Um, I mean, I guess you, I mean, you always could because it's Lego, but for the most part, your buildings are, are, are there and built. So if there's something that you need a little bit more room for, it's not there, you know? <laughs> no, I have room. I actually have multiple okay. lots that I've sort of put in buffer rooms and access roads and stuff inside there that I, I left there. But I, I designed around to allow me to fill in with buildings if I needed to. So I have room okay. and I have actually an entire, I'm, I'm doubling the square footage of the city right now, basically with expansion stuff. Nice. So I have way too much room probably for Lego. I need, yeah. Too Never much brought bad thing. Never a bad thing. Like, Sometimes. Like right now I'm kind of, I'm drowning in Lego. Like it's, <laughs> I got it all. I got it all over the place. Like I said, multiple floors. Um, you know, we have multiple sets, so we need a more organized space. I think with more shelving, and we need a, a YouTube dedicated area. Um, so once again, that all comes with moving, though, for us. So it's still a few years down the road. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm happy where I'm with it, and you're you're going the direction of a stateless Lego collection, where you're not really keeping anything other than your current box set up, right? Yes. Yeah, so, I, I think it's if I didn't have the extra space, I'd definitely go in the same direction. I wouldn't try to make space for Lego, I guess, over anything else. It really is on the bottom mm. list when it comes to having its own space. I like having a see, but you know, if I stop building on that, right. it's a lot of money too. Right. So, I don't know. I think. Yeah, um, I think. I think we're. Go ahead. No, you go ahead because I'm about to end the play thing. Oh, okay. No, our our biggest thing, our biggest goal in the future is just to build individual buildings. Still, because like I was telling you, I don't feel we have a big enough city yet. I, there's there's tons of more buildings I want to do. Um, and the, the other thing that's crazy is I'm going to start building for every 
I want for any city mock that I'm working on, I want to make be making a Star Wars mock as well. Oh, wow. So that's something we're going to be. I'm going to probably after Philadelphia, when we come back from that, force myself into um, making Star Wars mocks. And it's not force myself. I was just going to, you know, make the time, make the effort, and buy the brick for – because I have um, already a few ideas um, in place. One was a, uh, it was on from Star Wars Rebels. It was a, a spaceship that they needed to fight the uh, Empire. Um, and it was like a, it was like red, red, kind of like based off of uh, almost the kind of what the the new one that Leia dry is dry that comes in off of. I forget what what that set is called, but it's got the side piece and then like the long part. It, basically, the ship has that you know a brown part up here and a long. And oh, the I, ship. I gotcha. Yeah, the Republic transport. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that's the set with Le- yeah, the one uh, the the new Leia, the older Leia's in. <laughs> Man, that whole yeah, yeah. I haven't caught up. I bought all the new sets. I got like some of the new sets this year, like the um, the Carbonite Chamber. That thing's cool for twenty five bucks. You get the you get a really cool Boba Fett. You get that little ugly guy, pig guy. You get the um, the carbonite Han Solo and everything. It's neat for for the price. So I'm glad they did that this year. Yeah, I just saw that actually. I just saw that online. I just picked one up today at the store, and um, along with some of the new Marvel sets. But that was the one Star Wars one I wanted from now. The the escape pod was sort of me. Yeah, it's, I, I, if you needed an R two and a. C-3PO. Yeah, you know. but I have like a Death Star that I parted out, so <laughs> yeah, didn't need that. <laughs> eh, it's coming. Anyways, thanks for joining me this week. Uh, it was a um, we switched things up completely and changed it, and maybe it'll just be this. So, um, thanks for talking about your background with Lego. When are you going to be coming back to YouTube? Because you've been gone for a while there. I know you've been popping up on streams every now and then. Yeah, Everything. as far as I don't think we're going to be making full-time videos anytime soon. Um, just due to the schedule, we're going to throw, you know, every once in a while we'll have a vlog up. But it's not, it's, I need to get back on a regular basis. But um, unfortunately, not anytime soon on a regular basis. But the main goal and the main thing is, is I keep building is that I'm down here. Um, yeah, every day working a little bit here, a little bit there, so I can keep coming up with mock videos. I'd love to release a, a new mock every month, um, although I don't want to put any deadlines on myself or anything like that. But as long as I'm working and, and progressing, I, I, I feel happy that, and I and I think it'll help our you know channel growth just because um, mock videos get more views. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Lego City videos and mock videos are Trump all when it comes to that. It's exponential. Right. Right. And I think in the more and the more creative we get, the more different kind of builds that we get, um, I think will will help us. That's, and that's what I like to do about Lego. The shooting videos is, is cool and all. Um, and I'm once Riley gets a little bit older and she can do a little bit of the editing herself. Um, that would be great. Uh, help me out there. But um, as of right now, it's it just takes a little bit too much time away from everything else. Um, and if I was busy making blog videos, I wouldn't have enough time to build. And that, to me, is silly. <laughs> and I'm in the same position. It's like when I have time, I've been, um, you know, I work. And then with, with Becky being pregnant and everything and sort of swapping between places and everything lately, when I have time to build and, and play with Lego over here, I like to play with Lego. I don't like to spend the time making videos. I uh, So I sort of committed myself to doing that other Lego show, which comes on in 30 minutes. If you go to the link in the description, you can join me and Big B Bricks, and tonight's guest is going to be Down Under Bricks, and there will be the regular shenanigans and whatnot. And... 
I might pull something out of my ass and come up with a topic to actually discuss building technique wise. I don't have anything this week. Do you have anything? Any ideas for that that I could cover? Oh, building technique. Uh, something like that? Some top technical topic? I do. Here we go. Inlaying um, tile pieces for intricate designs. Oh, geez. Are those are actually yeah, those are wedges. Yeah, the wedges. Creating, doing it that way. Cre creating better designs using, I've not, not only I use this, I'm, well, I'm using this. This is my top secret design for um, something, but this is a rainbow brick version. Yeah. I often like to build in rainbow brick. But um, that, I saw this on an, uh, like a, like a chest, like an arm war or something like that, where they had the, the design with it. Um, so there's, there's, you know, more than one application you can use, you know, this, I don't, I don't even know what you call this technique. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I, I don't know either, but that is a very cool technique. I don't think I'm going to cover that because while I understand how to do it, I don't want to go and do that right now. That would take time if I prep <laughs> right. last week. Last week I actually spent time prepping like examples and everything. I um I if I have a topic, I'll do that, but I just don't. So I will no. um Brick Adjuster next week. is a bad father. And as a bad father, he just wanted to compliment you on being such a awesome father there, Patrick. He neglects oh, his child. Oh, <laughs> when it comes to he prioritizes the YouTube. To YouTube, okay, I got you, I got you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I unfortunately, um, and I don't enjoy it. I, I think I think Nick actually en enjoys it um, more than I. Where to me, it's more of a, I like sharing the Lego. I like making mock videos, but like it, it becomes after a while like the vlog videos. This becomes much. But I, but I do want to get back into it, you know. What yeah. What are they saying in the comments? Oh, I don't know. They're talking about I I can't follow. I want to get back into it too. I'm in the same spot as you. I've made the last video I made. It has like fifteen thousand views, but I just haven't done anything. That's like the last video I've made of any other than like hauls. I I shot a couple hauls that are non-committed, and. Uh, I have no desire to do those whatsoever. No, we totally stopped doing our hauls. I, I did my haul today was a, a photo of what we got um, yeah. from Berkeley. And that's it. That's, that's what we got today. I, to me, it, yeah, that's gets, I'd rather dig in and start building instead of, Oh, let's get out the, the camera. Okay. Let's get the lights. Right. Okay. You are right. And, hey, hey, Riley, you know, are you ready to do this video? And, oh, I want to play. <laughs> Yeah, so I will um, probably in the next month in March, I think I'm committed to doing a city update because I've changed a lot and it's finished. I mean, the city is complete. It, it's a complete city. No, I've seen some pictures and from yeah. what I've seen last on uh, any YouTube videos, it's definitely grown immensely. Oh, yeah. Well, the, from when it's, yeah, the last YouTube video, it's grown a lot. I need to do a video. Probably in March, I'll do one, and it'll probably be on my iPhone, and it'll probably look better than other stuff I try anyways, so. Okay. I'll just do that. Yeah, so, do that. So, join us in a half an hour at midnight on that other LEGO show's channel for me and Big B Bricks to make fun of Down Under Bricks to his face or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably give him a hard time and eat shrimp off the Barbie. Join us there. <laughs> um, it'll be fun. And maybe I'll do this again with someone else. Bye. Hell yeah, you should.